I just feel there's really nothing left to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's except, invite our filmmakers up here. Except, yeah. except that, of course. <laughs> Bud Slepsky. He's a... Uh, Fred Morin. Now, thank you. We have a shortage of cords, so we're gonna have to squish it together over on this side of the room a little bit more so everyone can talk. So, questions from the audience? We want to just open it up first, you know, anyone out there? I see a lot of selfie sticks. Can you, like, say who did each Yeah, okay, we'll let everyone introduce themselves and their film. I made Religious Beliefs with I'm Fred Morin, I did the last one, Caras. Really. Yes. I'm Patrick, I did Imperfect for Flowers. Okay. Step into the light a little tiny bit. There we go. Thanks. So, questions, questions, questions. What's next? Uh, <laughs> let's just start with that. Um, so. Contextualize your body work. Sure, sure, sure. So um, I work in a really wide range of mediums from writing, drawing, performance, video, printmaking. Prim so the, the title cards in between the different scenes were actually collagraphs that I had printed. Like it's kind of like you make a collage and then you ink it and then you print it a couple of different times. So, so the like the value of the ink decreased each time I made it and then it was kind of stop motion. That's kind of what that was. Um, but I made an installation for this project called Justin Bieber's and Frank House. That was part of the way that I presented the video. And basically, so basically the context is that Justin Bieber had gone to the Anne Frank House in April of 2013. And Anne Frank had on her walls images of film stars, actually. Like when they moved into hiding, she, like her dad brought all of the stuff for her to put on, and then she cut it up and put it on the walls, like a teenage girl would. And then, so when Justin Bieber came to the Anne Frank house, they don't usually give tours, but they gave him a tour. And they were like, they were like, you know, maybe she would have been a fan of yours, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And so he was like, huh. And so then when he wrote in the guest book, he just like didn't have a filter and he just repeated what they said. It wasn't like he created that, like they fed it to him. And so, and then there was this big backlash article. So I found out about this through the Daily, New York Daily News, like there was this big headline that said, What the Heil? That's why the first episode is called What the Heil. And they had all of these quotes from different like leaders of the Jewish community, like what? And some of them were like totally offended and they were like, I can't believe someone would have said that about a Holocaust victim. And other people were like, she was a teenage girl, what gives? And so um, I thought that was really interesting, like the this idea that you could just pluck her out of her historical context and think of this authentic self of hers and just pluck it right back into 2013 and decide whether she'd be a, a believer. <laughs> so that's why I made the middle one that was like, it was from quotes of both of theirs. Um, and then I wanted to create Justin Bieber's Anne Frank House to kind of analyze, I, I basically recreated the, all the images, not all of them, but the images she had on her actual walls and then I added Justin Bieber into it. So, and then I, I, I recreated this wallpaper that was like 1920s Belgium wallpaper, and you could sit on Anne Frank's bed and then like watch the videos. So that's my context. I can talk more about it if you want. <laughs> So, um, no, I won't answer for all of you. Um, <laughs> mine, my, I'll make mine really short. Um, so my piece, uh, what's next for me, is I'm actually looking at um, a lot of um, a film called The Children's Hour. And yeah, and it's, I'm specifically looking at um, the scenes where femininity stops um, being accepted for itself and starts um, like people like expectations start to be kind of projected onto it and when the character um, and how the character negotiates those choices. Woo! Woo! 
So what is the question? What's next for you? What other work what are you working on? Uh, I'm working on a film about um, the destruction of uh, fine art school in France. And um, uh, well, I'm working on that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was actually hoping not to have to say anything. Um, I am currently doing a photo project that's referencing a past history of uh, gay sexuality at cruising places and that contemporary as well, so mixing past and present. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk to you about that. Great. Uh, oh, first of all, the film is beautiful. Thank you. And um, I'm curious about the selection of the sound, like the, the background. Yeah, so um, if I heard you correctly, you were curious about the selection of sound? Okay, so um, am I talking too loud? No, okay. um, so the, the sound, the way that I made the sound is that I recorded a record and I edited this in Final Cut Pro and I decided to be strangely a masochist and I laid down the, the audio track, this like whatever three second clip that I took and I laid it down on the timeline of Final Cut Pro as if it were a record, so next to each other with some space in between, so you get that um, that you would kind of get on a uh, mono sound experience, but in like kind of using a digital, a recreation of that in digital. And you like um, that over other possible soundtracks? Actually, you know what? This piece was actually originally a silent film until um, I decided to include the scene where Marlene Dietrich um, does that gallant, like, I'm crossing the fence, yeah. I'm, I'm crossing the boundary. I wanted to slow that down. And then to make it clear that this was not a, a, a equipment failure, um, I kind of wanted to ground the piece in like this steady thing that was kind of lulling, um, maybe a little too much. But I kind of wanted to ground it in something predictable and steady so that the flow would continue. And when that thing happened, people would still feel like, oh, this is supposed to be happening. It's deliberate. It's not some kind of mishap. It's really great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Another question over here. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd like to know what you think, why you think that these particular four creatures are particular icons for our sensibility, our collective sensibility, as opposed to what the other sensibility has. And I think it's to everyone. So, so the, the, just to rephrase the question, thank you, Jim, is um, why are each of these four you know, th these icons, icons for us, for our sensibility are in, and, and so on. For queers, yeah, and, and, and of course, not to, you know, say that we all have one sensibility, but like the idea is that, why did this speak to us? Because we obviously love the shit out of it, so why, you know, why did these figures speak to us? Um, I don't know how heavy-handed I have to go about Anne Frank or Dustin. Well, so, so Anne Frank did have a, an entry in her diary about, like, she had this friend named Jacqueline Van Marsden, who she was really into, and she they had a sleepover, and she was like, "Can I touch your boobs? Like, come on, just let me." And like, blah blah blah. Like, so that's so some people consider her part of the like queer canon, but whatever. I feel like it's an experience that she had sexual that is a set of experiences. And Justin Bieber, you know, yeah. Um, but my interest was also like, well, it was kind of about this idea of like whether the self can be permanent thing. Like it's kind of like a deeper concept thing for me, but also I just really enjoyed playing both of them and and just like what that says about like the performativity of like my voice as a gender queer, whatever. <laughs> um, well, I think where canon is a huge, well, it's one of the main motivations to make that piece. Um, and specifically as like queer studies becomes this um, norm thing in Western academia, I think I think we have to be so much more um, demanding of like who that word is serving and how. Um, so this piece is really about um, nuance, like nothing but that. Really, um, I focus on um, gesture, like specifically on-screen gesture of fluid sexuality at a time and kind of before and during the Hays Code, when that was kind of currency, like heavy social currency as opposed to being taboo. And that doesn't really get, these characters get uh, filed under like a monosexual lens in queer studies. And I kind of wanted to go against that and say, hey, there's a lot more nuance going on and there's a history of fluid sexual culture here. Um, 
I, I didn't want to do this film at first <laughs> at all. And I didn't ask myself the, um, about um, uh, the queer character or the queer icon. It's, um, I think uh, maybe she's becoming a kind of queer in this film um, by with, with, with is her loneliness. Um, maybe she's a queer icon, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine was proper maple thorpe photos in a, in a video form, and I guess I was just referencing it. A time with uh, HIV's presence, and I was working with kids that had that were diagnosed with HIV, and they had a lot of shame with their uh, diagnosis. So it was mostly to rid that shame um, and play with that reference. So.